Elegant simplicity is deceptively difficult to achieve. And that's modeling, idealization of engineered structures. Is that we're trying to, we're idealizing it. And we have to make assumptions. The more powerful assumptions you're making, the more powerful the model is. So um, <laughs> this is my short list. <laughs> do I always follow it? No. Um, do I try to follow it? Yes. And when I don't follow it and I screw up, I, I, it's sort of like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> um, saves our model locally to a unique name every couple of hours. We append WIP. Work in progress to our model names and save them as whip A, B, C. Um, I really try to do that. This space is cheap. But um, mm, last week I, I was working on a model and I forgot to do it. Then I closed everything out and didn't save it. And I went, uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, fortunately, I, I was able to rebuild it in a half an hour. But uh, it's life. Um, performs all checks prior to releasing their model to their colleagues. And of course, production. But we're talking about the checks, the, the big one, dimensions, mass, weight, numbers, units. Uses symmetry. Um, symmetry forces you to really understand your loads and your model. That's really a good thing. And uh, not even even if you don't need it, it enforces a bit of of uh, it enforces a bit of order on your model. So, employs beam elements since you're the ultimate in optimization. You can change everything, even though they're a bit scary to use at times. Uh, the easily, the most easiest thing to use is solid because you don't have to think. You just mesh it, you're done. But um, it doesn't give you the flexibility that beam and plate elements have. Is comfortable with RBE two and three elements. Understands they are multi-point constraints and are not suitable for geometrically nonlinear analysis. Because what happens on a multi-point constraint is it sets up the relationship on the first iteration, the first solve, and it's done. It doesn't update it. And a geometric nonlinear analysis updates the stiffness matrix as a function of geometry. So as the structure deforms and the load path changes, the geometry accommodates that. So if you're using multi-point constraints in a, in a geometrically nonlinear analysis, uh, strange things will happen because they only get updated once. Strives to hex mesh, but <laughs> but is quick to pull the plug. And tet mesh, tet mesh, that which belongs to tet meshing. And uh, and then uses glue connections. Avoids the use of contact for multi-part assemblies when you can do it as a piece part because contact can be a real performance penalty. And here we are at the last. Reads the manuals. Oh, I use a lot of LS Dyna, and it just kills me. Is the manuals are so dense. I, I read it once, I read it again. I try to figure out what's going on, and um, the manuals are right. It's just that oh, I have to really be careful and read them, and build pilot models all the time, trying to debug phenomenon. Um, attends technical seminars, which is always good for figuring out how other people are doing things. Create stupid, simple pilot models. And I do a lot of that, as I mentioned, on pilot models to try to figure out stuff and not try to do it on a big model. And last, we have two training opportunities coming up. We have our LS Dyna Analysis for Structural Mechanics class. And that is coming up in January of, of the new year. And what that involves, well, it's not a class. It's, it's, it, yes, you're using FEMAP to build some models, but you're really not, the class is not about FEMAP. It's about using LS Dyna in structural mechanics for mechanical engineers. And it's, it's, the purpose is to take you from ground zero on explicit methods time-stepping, mesh quality, keywords, contact, elements through LS Dyna. And it'll take you all the way through using um, spherical particle hy hydrodynamics and DM, other structural mechanics. And, and that's where Kirk, Kirk will be teaching the Thursday and Friday of this class on SPH and contact. And if you guys have never seen, 
where is my okay predictive engineering analysis examples come on why is my mouse come on gotta hit it Elastina and so here's an example of Elastina cargo net you know fabric materials contact everywhere hey Kurt can you see this yeah, I can see it. Okay, let me know some is a lag is sometimes. So this is interaction with discrete element method to mimic rock and gravel. And it's hitting this gigantic conveyor that's three meters wide. So you got a multi-physics simulation. This this rock here is twelve thousand kilograms. And uh, this is maybe more classic drop testing. Composite materials, everything beaten up, and then where do we also got? Uh, you got ballistics through foam, aluminum cover. I'm going to show one more. That's uh, da -da 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 -da, foam. Where is my? This is a spinning disc. We got a really nice blade out. Got a submarine. Packed up, nested. Ah, burst simulation. There we go. Like this. Blade out. And one of the big markets for LS9 is car crash simulations. That takes care of that. So, and that class, is January 27th, 30th in Portland. And then we have our other class, the standard FEMAP and NX NASTRAN training on April 21st and 24th. So, that's on the, on the training side, so right at 45 minutes. Kirk, I'm going to pass the baton over to you. Sounds good. And I'm going to change the presenter. You can talk a bit about SPH. Let me see if this is going to work. Okay. I think you share your screen. Okay. Can you give me a a button to click? Yeah, it's in the, um, oh, there's a whole bunch of things in the little panel on the side. You know, and one is show my, should say show my. Okay, there we go. Should have it now. Can you see my screen now? It not yet. It, oh, it, this is one of the things. No. This is why it's nice having uh, a co-presenter is that you can, you can tell me if, if it's not refreshing. Okay. All right, let me know when you're there. Okay. Now, you should be able, it should come alive on your screen. It's not there yet. Hey, George, this is Kyle. I actually see his screen right now. Awesome. Oh, are, you, are, are, are you a panelist, too? I didn't know that. Yeah, awesome. yeah I joined ten minutes late. I was on a call. Hi, Kyle. Hey. Okay. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to talk uh, for about five minutes about uh, some of the more fancy stuff that we've got in Elastina, smooth particle hydrodynamics, SPH, and uh, arbitrary Lagrange Eulerian, ALE, and uh, discrete element method, DEM. So, uh, sort of some of the newer features that uh, Elastina has included into their multi-physics package. So this, this first one sort of putting uh, pretty much everything together, we've got a wave slamming into a pile of rocks. So the wave is represented by ALE, the rocks are DEM, and uh, then the rest of the structure is uh, good old uh, finite elements. So everything's coupled together and uh, it's a it's a really really powerful tool. If you ever have a situation where you want to slam some 
water into a pile of rocks. Uh, we've got you covered on that front. For all you guys out there in uh, mining or uh, agriculture or what have you, the dem is just it's absolutely fantastic. This is something that LS9 added uh, a couple years ago into their standard package. Uh, we can see a nice little video here of a dump truck being filled up by a bucket loader. And the uh, particles are contoured with uh, velocity. You can contour different uh, yeah, you can contour pressure on there and all different aspects. For those of you uh, interested in sorting or mixing, that's something that uh, is really easy to take care of with them as well. Here we got uh, four different materials coming into the model and uh, it's being layered up and mixed, pushed around. We we're just showing the different particles, the different materials as different colors. Again, you can show velocity or pressure or whatnot in there as well. Here's something that we uh, put together a little while ago for, I don't know if anyone's there from ESCO or Altera right now, but uh, this is something we put together for you guys, the downhole drilling. And this is, uh, this is putting it all together as well. We have DEM, finite element, and ALE. So the downhole tool is drilling into a a bunch of uh, dem particles that sort of represent the soil or rock, but there's also a liquid phase, uh, like a mud, that's uh, included. And the whole model, you can see the whole model on the one side, and then the two interactions are shown. You got the on the one upper model, you got the dem interaction, and the lower is the interaction with the tool and the water, which is ALE. This is an image from, uh, you know, for anyone that's going to be able to take the upcoming Alice Dyna class in January, this is one of the models that you guys will be working on, uh, Bird Strike. So the bird is modeled with SPH elements, and it's just slammed right into uh, this propeller. And we have a look at, uh, you know, different ways to treat the bird, you know, whether there's contact after the bird fails with the blades, or if we just want to forget it once the bird fails, all kinds of different uh, approaches that we'll have a look at in the class. Now this is hitting really close to home for me. This is my um, PhD research work. I'm working on um, friction stir welding. If anyone's not familiar about it, you can uh, get in touch with me afterwards and I can tell you more about it. But I was just showing a little bit more about uh, what SPH can do. We have two materials being mixed up together and uh, we accurately capture free surfaces and defects uh, within the weld. 